Hello everybody, so Kyle Thero here. Welcome back to another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this one gonna be doing something a little different. I'm actually gonna be uh talking with you guys here today. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my trim. I'm just getting ready for takeoff here. Uh we're gonna be doing a flight today. It's going to be the continuation of my around the world trip. So we are in Puerto Rico right now, and we are gonna be flying out to the Dominican Republic. Uh, actually pretty close to where you probably don't want to be at the time of this recording, which is, uh, near Haiti. And, uh, if you watch the news, you know what's going on over there right now. And probably not the best place to be flying to, but we'll be in and out, I guess you can say. So, let me go ahead and get the plane ready to start up here. And... Go. I'm not used to flying by myself. It's kind of a, uh... Feels like it's something new to me when it shouldn't be. So, let me go ahead and fire her up. There you go. I already got the parking brake unset. Uh, yep. I think I got everything set up here. Uh, flight level today is going to be 12,000 feet. I do not know how long this video is going to be. The flight time is supposed to be two hours. So, obviously, I'll be cutting uh, in and out of the uh, flight through that uh, through that time. We're gonna boot up right now. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start giving it some power here. Oh, I forgot to. Uh, ah, I forgot to change my plane livery. Well, we'll just, we'll just say uh, I'm in the middle of a paint job. I guess in the middle of this of this uh, trip. Uh, I was talking to my buddy Stoppel and Jay about it. I don't know if it got picked up in the last video, but I was talking about um, changing uh, my livery after I get out of South America and then uh, changing it to something else when I start getting back into the U.S. here again on the uh, East Coast. So I might be looking at a uh, paint job change here. So reason why the uh, comment there about the uh, paint job. Honestly, I forgot to switch it back to the one I've been flying with this whole time. So in this video, unfortunately, I won't have the right paint job. And I am taxiing really fast here. But I'm going to go ahead and taxi over to the runway. We're departing out of runway 10 here. And uh, we are expected to be landing at runway number 10 as well. So I'm going to head over here right now. This is uh, runway 10 that you can see right here. But it uh, is over at the other end of the uh, airfield here. So I got to taxi all the way down. Alright, we have uh, made it out to our taxiway here. We are clear for takeoff. It's going to be some really soupy weather we are uh, taking off in. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I keep the uh, weather to live weather. That's why you see sometimes it's pretty uh, cloudy out. The only thing I change is the time just because I don't like to... I mean, I like flying at night. Honestly, it's very peaceful, but I know for you guys it's kind of hard to watch. So that's the reason why... Uh, you won't see too many night flights when uh, when I'm recording for this series. So we already got our flaps set. Trim should be set. Yep. All right. We're going to go ahead and uh, depart out here. I feel like I'm forgetting something because I'm going really fast doing this. It, it took me about 15 minutes to get uh, set up here and start getting moving for you guys, but... I think it's just because uh, it's just me on this flight today. And yeah, this is a long runway. Alright, we're up. Go ahead and kill the flaps. Landing gear up. Kind of manually fly it here for a bit. So on this first uh, part of the flight, it says something about, and you guys will obviously know and and uh, school me on this, but uh, it says something about 520 feet is the first waypoint. So I'm assuming like there's some sort of uh, height restriction, like you have to be a certain amount of feet before you can uh, make your turn. I, I'm assuming anyways, again, don't quote me on this. I know very little to almost nothing about aviation. <laughs> 
Alright, I made that one, but it's not confirming it as a waypoint that was done. Alright, let's go ahead and start getting some stuff set up here. I don't want VNAV. Go to my flight plan and just wipe this out. Trying to get me to do, yeah, okay. I'll let it do its uh, circle around here. I'm just trying to get the autopilot turned on here. So it's gonna kind of loop me around and then get me back on uh, on track here. I'm guessing, anyways. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, this is some really bad weather. I mean, at least doing this loop, it'll help me out with uh, getting, getting some elevation here before we keep moving on. I don't know what it's got me doing right now. Well, we'll see. I mean, that's all we can see. There's nothing to look at outside. My goodness, this weather's bad. Hopefully the, uh, the Dominican Republican is, or Republic is uh, not as bad as it is out here. No matter how bad the weather is, I always love this game. It looks so good. Um, I don't know what it's doing to me, though. It's trying to make me... Here. Remove that waypoint. Yep. Oh, apparently it lost the flight plan, so we're going to turn off the autopilot. This is always what happens when stop. Ooh, I'm really banking. This is what happens when Stoppel's not around. He's the pilot expert. I'm just doing this because I'm having a lot of fun with it, and it's nice trying to learn. I know what we could do. We'll do autopilot. We'll do heading. We'll just do a heading... Uh, cruise right now because I'm pretty sure this is towards where I want to go. Yep, that's about right. We'll just leave that there for now. Is there a reason why... I'm not sure why that did what it did. That's really weird. Do direct to there. Alright, now we'll go into nav mode. That should fix it now. says I'm about six minutes out from there so cool yeah so we're starting to make our climb here we're doing a little bit better now <laughs> um, but yeah doing a flight by myself today uh, the guys were busy and kind of forgot that I was gonna do a flight today and uh, I was like well I gotta record so might as well jump on and do a flight with you guys um, I figured too it'd be a good time to like address things that people might not know about this series because they might be tuning in later on because a lot of you guys have been subscribing after this series started but anyways for those of you that don't know I'm doing a trip around the world 
uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I say Microsoft Flight Simulator because I do plan on buying uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Um, so obviously this is 2020 right now. And I have gone through, I left California into Texas, down into Mexico, uh, all down into South America as low as uh, Chile and then all the way over to as far as Argentina and then all the way back up through Brazil and been doing some island hopping. And we are up here right now to Puerto Rico and we're about to uh, be landing as long as I don't die uh, at the in the uh, Dominican uh, Republic. So that's kind of the trip so far. Still got a few things to get through till we get to uh, get to the US. Uh, I still want to see Jamaica, so we're going to land at some point in Kingston, uh, Jamaica. And then we're also going to have a few landings in Cuba before we uh, start hitting some more islands. And then finally we get to the Florida Keys and then uh, we'll be landing in Florida. But I have the entire trip uh, mapped out already. Uh, thanks to my buddy Stoffel, we stayed up late one night and just kind of... Uh, pick some airports that he thought would look pretty cool to fly into and uh, would accomplish what I was trying to see and uh, it was it was a lot of a lot of work and we got it all mapped up and I have it on my discord right now it's in the announcements area if you are in the discord and would like to see it or follow along uh, if you do this is considered as the title will say uh, leg number 30 and there is a total of 129 or, or 120 legs. So yeah, that's, that's quite a bit. <laughs> um, so I got about 90 to go. So definitely Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 will be out by the time I, uh, huh? oh, getting the, the notification that we're about a thousand feet before we get to our uh, cruising altitude here. But this is looking pretty good. We're finally breaking out of the soup. I like the default paint scheme on the on the plane. It looks pretty good on the Vision Jet. I'm not gonna lie. I like the kind of grayish, like battleship grayish white color with the uh, black accents to it. It looks pretty good. But looking pretty good down there too. Not as many clouds, so hopefully it's uh, not too bad. As I said, we got a little bit of turbulence too. But yeah, that's the uh, plan with the flight uh, to give you guys the. Uh, I guess the Reader's Digest version of the flight plan. So I'm doing all these islands and then I'm gonna be in Florida and then flying up the east coast of the states into Canada. I definitely wanna check out um, some sites in the US obviously. I've debated on uh, going back and forth about doing a separate series where I do around the United States and just kind of fly around the states and check out all the different sites and whatnot, all the uh, landmarks that I can. Uh, but some of them will, will get tackled on this trip as well in the around the world because uh, a lot of the flights towards the end of this trip it'll kind of look weird like because I'll kind of enter through Canada and then I'll kind of head for the Midwest and then I'll start making my way west till I finally get back to California again. So yeah, that's what's going on uh, with this series. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give my voice a little bit of a break because it has been a while since I recorded, so it's probably hurting right now. And uh, I'll tune back in with you guys later on in the flight here. All right, it looks like I'm uh, getting over the Dominican Republic right now and uh, off the uh, ocean here, basically, or flying over the ocean, over the water. I still got a little while to go on my flight. Uh, right now, uh, end game time is 12.37 p.m. And I am expected to get there at uh, 13.32 p.m. So I still got about an hour to go here on my flight, but we've burned out an hour already, so that's pretty good. Um, I was up at 14,000 feet, but it was really like this is kind of wobbly. Like the turbulence was a little, it was a little bit like this, but it was way worse at 14, 
1,000 uh, feet, so I decided to come back down to 12,000 feet. I went up originally because I saw the cloud layers coming in like this, and I kind of figured, you know, maybe I should get a little bit higher so I'm not flying through it. But it was just way too bouncy up there. I was like, you know what, we need to come back down again. And as you can see, it's still a little shaky down here too. So yeah, uh, flight's been going good so far. Uh, I just had that little mishap in the beginning with the autopilot, but uh, and then like with the uh, flight plan, but we got through it. And we are definitely on our way now, uh, just visually. So here's the navigation map here. This is, uh, I like to keep zoomed out. So we're about, uh, it's about 200 or so uh, miles out, nautical miles out from our uh, destination here. So for those of you, because I've never said this before, like, because usually when I do these videos, I just uh, talk and you guys get to listen to me and Stoffel talking back and forth or you Stoffel or Jay or whoever else is on the flight with us there. Um, I have a specific way I like to set up my my uh, my two garments here. So basically, I try to keep the controls for this screen over here, and then I use this one to navigate between these two screens. This screen, I leave the radio on it, but I don't use ATC in here. I don't fly on bad sim or anything like that, so I don't really need it. I, I'm not familiar with it either, so I just leave it up just to have a different screen over there more than anything but I'll have my flight plan here as you see it has the information as well for the uh, each waypoint uh, thanks to Joe for uh, showing me how to do that or all of us when he uh, flew with us last and then this is the data screen that you always have up anyways it tells you your fuel level and your flaps and uh, your heading as well as I'm not sure what the what this is right here the FATIC I've read it in the checklist before but I'm not sure what it actually does and then I keep another version of the map over here but I usually keep this one zoomed out so I can kind of see how the overall flight is going and then this one I keep zoomed in and I usually work on this one when I'm trying to see how a runway approach is looking or like when I need to taxi which runway I'm going to so like for instance, I'll click this in and then I can move the mouse cursor around in it, which is pretty neat. It's a nice little feature. So you see my flight plans going over here. And then there's runway 10 of where I'm going to be landing. So you can see it kind of, we're going to kind of go around and then we kind of set us up for our approach here. That's probably not the ideal way to do it, but that's the way I have it set up with what I have on here. But yeah, I like to keep that one zoomed in a little bit more so I have an idea of what the ground layout looks like in anything around me. And then uh, lastly, I have my traffic map here for when I fly with the guys. I can see them over here too. You guys probably see me call it out in other videos too. But just in case you were wondering, that's the reason why I have those all set up the way that I do. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of some other things to go over with you guys here. I haven't been recording any American Truck Simulator, so like I don't really have much that I touch on about personal stuff wise and I am debating on doing a recording of American Truck Simulator right now just because that's usually where I talk about uh, personal things going on things going on with the channel uh, stuff I'm doing IRL and whatnot um, so I guess if I don't use a American Truck Simulator video. I'll use this, but if I do, I guess it'll be twice. If you don't like trucks, you like planes, well, you'll hear it here. If you don't like planes and you like trucks, you might hear it there if I do it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just been recording, chugging along, been having a lot of fun playing, um, ready or not, actually. Uh, it's a video, or it's a game that I play, and um, I got a little excited with when they did the official release of the game and I did a lot of recording for it um, So look Regardless of my pre-recording right now, it'll be out every Tuesday until like October November. There's just <laughs> There's so much content the single-player content playthrough some playthrough with my buddies when we uh, play multiplayer um, there'll be DLCs that I know will be coming out, and I most likely will pick them up with new maps and new weapons and whatnot, so I'll probably be doing that too. So there'll be uh, videos of that as well. So there is just 
like my pre-recordings for Tuesdays are covered for like almost the rest of 2024 already. And this recording for context is in March. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm pretty good for Tuesdays for a while. We'll, we'll just say that. Uh, that's how that goes for that. This series, uh, for those of you that are new, was going to be coming out on Saturdays, but I've been using it as like an extra bit of content, but I've been using it as a series to fill in for my Mondays because Mondays is kind of like what I feel like playing. That's not police simulator, patrol officers or LSPDFR. And it ranges from anything. It could be Mamba Zoo, which you guys have seen when they have new updates. And it's this Microsoft Flight Simulator, American Truck Simulator, like kind of random. It's not really designed for a specific game. And those of you that are new to my channel, um, most of my recordings are not like on a set schedule for like certain content other than two, which is Police Simulator Patrol Officers, which is every Wednesday. So that way you guys can enjoy that. And then uh, every Friday is LSPDFR um, until if there is a VCPDFR, I, I don't know. When GTA 6 comes out, that might be a thing. I would assume that it'll be a thing, but it's not confirmed. Game's not even confirmed on PC yet or when it's coming out for PC, so long way is out for that. Um, let's see, what else? But yeah, that's pretty much my scheduling for the channel. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays are kind of just randoms, random games that I'm playing or playing through. Uh, except right now, Tuesdays is going to be a lot of Ready or Not. Uh, Thursdays, there's going to be, and I'm sure they're already coming out by the time this video comes out, there's going to be a lot of Lethal Company, which I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but wanted to use the, the videos and the coverage, and I had a lot of fun playing it with my friends, and if they want to play again in the future, we might do that too, but it's an interesting game with mods. I definitely wasn't looking at getting that game, but I was given the game. And I feel bad if I don't play a game that's gifted to me because I'm like, well, then I'm somebody wasted their money on me. Uh, so I, I do enjoy playing it. I just I'm not sure if I would ever purchase that game. I, I, it's a lot of fun. And after playing it, I, I enjoy it. But if I'm not with my buddies and without the mods that we have that they basically put together to make it easy for me to play, I don't know if I would play the game. And, I mean, to its credit, though, it's not an expensive game. And when they gained traction on popularity, they didn't raise the price either. Going, oh, hey, you know, we got a gold mine here. Let's jack up the price. So uh, shout out to those devs for just basically get, sticking with what they got and saying, hey, let's ride this train and see how the how good we do. Um, but I am. I, I just, I never have the time to do it. I hope I have time, but I doubt I'll, I'll have the time. But I do have Autobahn Police Simulator 3 that I have been meaning to do recordings of a playthrough of it. It's just my time is so limited right now with um, other content I'm recording and then uh, vehicle building for OCRP and just GTA 5 in general. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just my time is very limited. If I didn't have a day job, I might have more time, but uh, unfortunately I need to pay bills. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta have a day job too, working a nine to five job basically. Oh, that was my chair. You can hear that in the background. Um, let's see, what else? I do plan on recording a series. I don't expect it to be popular. And I don't know if it's gonna work because I know the audio will get um, get demonetized because the music will be copyright. Ooh, got some uh, got some lagging going on here. But uh, I recently installed again uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and the original time I had it, or originally when I bought it, and I played it. It was just an online multiplayer shooter game like Battlefield or Call of Duty, anything like that, but with Star Wars. I'm like, yeah, this is fun, but I was like, hey, it is what it is. But I didn't realize that they had a single player uh, story mode that they added to it as well. That was actually a lot of fun. And um, I did play through it just to experience it with the Star Wars music, just because that is a big key in those movies. And that franchise, the music really like 
get you sucked into it. It's really powerful music uh, for emotion and whatnot. So I'm, that might be something that's coming out. And if I do do that, it'll be on Thursdays. Um, but like I said, I don't know how well YouTube will receive it with the music. And I know there's a way to turn off the audio of the music, as far as I know anyway. So I'm hoping that it's still pretty decent to where people will want to watch it as well. But we'll see. Uh, some other things. I'm trying to think of what else I got going on here. Oh, from the console aspect, I have made the switch. Uh, for those of you that have been here for a long time, you know that I, uh, the console I, ha I have is a uh, Xbox One that I have been using since it came out, basically. And a lot of the Xbox content you saw on my channel before was from that Xbox One. I have made the purchase to the next gen. Uh, consoles and I was given a link to a really good deal for one and I actually uh, jump ship a little bit well I should say a little bit I did jump ship I actually bought a PlayStation now so I have a PlayStation 5 uh, to be exact I have the PlayStation 5 slim or digital I'm I, to be honest I'm not very familiar with all that stuff so <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called but I ended up making the switch to PlayStation 5 uh, I know people are the console war people are gonna come in here and say oh yeah you made the right decision and other people go no PlayStation sucks whatever uh, I'm gonna be honest this is what um, was the deciding factor for me uh, one it was a really good deal and two almost everything on Xbox is available on PC it seems like I don't, and you guys can let me know in the comments but I want to say there isn't much in the way of Xbox games that's not available on PC and obviously I have a PC because I have this going and obviously my PC is pretty good so I can record for you guys too so kind of weighed my options and I was like there's no real reason to have an Xbox console because it's pretty much a duplicate of having a PC it's like if something can't run I'll just upgrade my PC or I'll do a rebuild of a PC to a new PC if I have the funds to do it so I was like nah I'm not gonna stick with uh, an Xbox. I wanted to try something new, and I got a uh, PlayStation 5 instead. And they had a really good deal to purchase the digital PlayStation 5. Um, I never have CDs anymore, anyway, so I'm like, eh, what's the point of buying one with the CD drive in it? And um, I ended up. I only have two games right now. I have Spider-Man 2 because that was part of the promotion. Was um, you get the Spider-Man game for free? And then I bought. <laughs> I can't believe I did this too. I bought it for a fourth time now. I have GTA 5, but I have GTA Online only. I bought the version where it's just online. I was like, I'm not gonna play the story again. I played the story three times already. This is my fourth time buying uh, GTA 5 in a way. I was like, I don't need it anymore. I bought it on Xbox 360 when it first came out. I bought it on Xbox One when it first came out. I bought it on PC when it first came out. And now I finally just bought it on uh, PlayStation 5 with uh, just the GTA Online uh, side of it. So that was uh, that was what I wanted to do or what I wanted to play on it because I wanted to be able to transfer my character over. As well as I was debating on which console to get because whatever console I got was going to dictate what uh, console I was going to buy GTA 6 for. So I will be buying GTA 6. And playing it on my uh, PlayStation 5 and I don't know if there's a way to stream it to my PC so I can record for you guys which if there is I will truth be told GTA 6 is such a popular game I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube front pages is just millions of content creators going check out my experience with GTA 5 and they're just playing GTA 5 themselves like the full story mode so honestly I I'm going to do it if I can get it to work but I'm pretty sure I'm not expecting much from it I'm pretty sure it'll get saturated pretty quickly on YouTube where just everybody is doing it because it's such a popular game and everybody's looking forward to it um so yeah it's an update on the console area so I do still have my Xbox One um, 
just in case I want to play it every now and then and it's set up too. I just need to plug in the HDMI cord into my TV just because it can't fit three. And um, yeah, I, again, I still do plan on playing games that are exclusive to Xbox. Like I am looking forward to whenever they say it's going to come out. I know they've had a lot of hiccups. Um, State of Decay 3, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I still play State of Decay 2 when I'm bored. I just, instead of playing on my Xbox, I just play through my PC instead since I, I can do that. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the console news. I'm trying to think of what else I got for you guys here. Uh, as of this recording, and I guess it won't matter because I'm pretty sure a lot of these will start coming out uh, soon. If, and probably before this recording if not or after this recording but if not I mean spoiler alert ahead for OCRP stuff so um, OCRP wise today is March 15th um, I've completed our next vehicle pack that's going to be going to the server uh, it's got approval by Jeff and Ryan that they like what they see and everything's correct with uh, what Stoppel did for the patterns and Griffin did for the uh, liveries, and it's going to be the Polito Bay uh, Police Department, which you guys will, by the time this video comes out, you guys will have already seen it, and it's been out for a couple weeks, so no shocker there. Um, so that's finished. Then the next department that'll come out will either be Grape Seed. We are creating an a grape seed police department of uh, vehicle fleet it's only going to be two vehicles and we already have it in server now but it's just a livery of existing cars like it's just a livery of um the police uh what is it like lspd or uh sandy shores or something like that and it's just a double used car basically but everything in ocrp that's leo is getting its own model so now it's not going to be Okay, I'm going to spawn the police car for LSPD, and then I'm going to change delivery to highway so I can drive this car like a Crown Vic on the highway. No, everything is getting its own model now. But uh, I think Grape Seed is probably going to be next, the way that Stoffel's working. Um, then after that, we have the update to the Highway Patrol, which is, as best as I could do it, a one-to-one -one, uh, scale accuracy to the Florida Highway Patrol. Um, so we have that coming out and then I also did an update to the fish and wildlife department Which was gonna go away uh, Instead of doing a Ford F-250 they have a brand new 2023 Chevy Silverado 2300 that's gonna be pretty cool and we got rid of the uh, the uh, Sanchez motorcycle that they used to ride around on and they ride a Honda CRX 100 or something like that now forget which type I know it's a Honda I just can't remember which uh, trim of a Honda uh, motorcycle but then and that was pretty much everything I had set up and ready to go uh, when I sat down with Stoffel to get the light patterns all set up for him uh, after that I still have the undercover cars that we have to go over which uh, I've been asked not to share any more details about them and which ones they are so Unfortunately, nobody will get to see that on Twitter or anything like that. Just know that that's a thing. Because um, they really want to scare Civs and scare... I mean, obviously not me because I'm building them, so I know which ones they are. But you just be driving down the road and you go, Oh, it's another Civ, and then all of a sudden these emergency lights turn on and you're like, Oh, that was not a Civ. <laughs> and eventually people will catch on and they'll, they'll kind of figure out which ones they are. But... They're all of our Civ cars, so it, it'll be hard to tell if it's a Civ or not a Civ. <laughs> um, but that'll be the next department. And then we have Sandy Shores that I finished the initial build on. And we just have to go over what lights need to be attached for light patterns. And then after that is uh, Blaine County Sheriff's Office. And then that will be done as well. That one is in the initial building stages. Um, I just got the approval today on which light bar they would like and equipment from uh, Jeff and Ryan and uh, Bugs. So I know which light bar to throw on the cars and any other equipment they want. And then the rest, like I said, I've always enjoyed about being with OCRP. The rest of it is up to my creative freedom, basically. 
which is if they see something they don't like I just take it off it's no big deal um, yeah that's it for their LEO vehicles and after that I'm gonna move on to Civ cars again which I've already started on some we have um, two new Ferraris that are already done this is gonna be like a lot of exotic like high-end cars is what it's gonna start off with like there's like two or three Ferraris like three or four Lamborghinis Bugattis an Audi R8 uh, Shelby Cobra, uh, the, the Shelby 429 Cobra, basically, um, Ford GTs. Like, it's gonna be a lot of like rare exotics, like high-end cars. But there's also some like everyday cars in there too. Lots of EVs, lots of EVs coming with this update. I got like the Cybertruck for Tesla. I got a Tesla Model S. I got a Tesla Model X, I believe as well. Um, the new Ford Lightning, the F-150 Lightning, um, a Kia. I have the uh, Kia crossover car. I can't remember. I think it's just called an EV6 or something like that, but I have one of those. There's, there's going to be a lot of EVs coming with the next Civ update. Um, and then some, like, average everyday cars, too, like Kia Fortes and, like, stuff you see every day on the road. From my perspective, like, from my builds, like, where they have the mods and the dealer plates and all the extra additional stuff you can do with them that's like the stuff i work on that doesn't that's not to say that we don't find some outside resources on like gta 5 mods and i convert it over to uh work in 5m and we use those too that's always up for uh that's always up for new stuff going in as well um yeah that's everything on a ocrp front with all that it should take me into um, let's see, that should take me into probably by the time GTA 6 comes out. That should hold over OCRP for a while. Um, I am planning, I haven't put it on my Discord yet because I haven't made it official and I don't know if I want to do it or not. I've been debating on going back and forth on either updating some of my vehicle packs like my LAPD pack and my CHP pack to be a little more modernized with what I do now with like light templates and like unit numbers but I know a lot of you guys like the fonts that I know a lot of you guys like to use your own font and also with like the unit numbers for example I know I won't get that right so I put or I can't get the combination right so I tr I'm really debating on actually doing it or just leaving them as they are but it's either gonna be that or another new pack um if you're in my discord there is a new pack it's the uh, florida highway patrol i'm gonna make um it's basically ocrp's highway patrol fleet but um ocrp doesn't have the dodge challenger that um fhp has so that's the only difference is of the uh, challenger and the uh, released version of it but i'm also gonna i'm toying with doing one more pack before gta 6 comes out and i pretty much kind of go on a hiatus with building any cars for public use like public releases basically um so i could play gta 6 but we'll see i you, you just never know like that's a year away things can change and anything can happen from now and then um but yeah that's from the gta the gti gta uh five vehicle building front that i can pick up off the top of my head uh, you know, IRL stuff, last thing too, um, before we, uh, start getting closer here to our, uh, destination, is I am, I'm gonna actually, I've already came and gone as, by the time this video goes out, but, uh, I'm going to Florida, I'm flying out, uh, on the 6th of the April to go visit with my dad, um, I leave from, uh, Orange County, California on the 6th in the morning and then I get into I believe I'm flying into DFW so uh, Dallas Fort Worth area um, about mid late afternoon because of the time zone change and then from there I fly to uh, Jacksonville Florida to uh, to my final destination there with my uh, dad being out there and then those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I've, I've actually been there twice already. I went in 2020, and then I went in 2021 as well, just because prices were cheap because of COVID. Nobody was flying, and 
I was like, well, I'll take my chances. It's a good deal. And I got lucky. I made it just fine um, on both trips, too. But uh, this one will be different because my sister's actually going to go. But she's never been yet. And it's been a long time since she's seen my dad. So it'll be pretty cool that she'll be out there at the same time. So it'll be kind of like almost the whole family there. And uh, she flies out, I believe, the 9th, which is a Tuesday from... Uh, San Francisco up in the Bay Area there and she flies out that day to Florida so she'll be like me and get pretty jet lag like flying to Florida is not bad I mean flying wise it's not bad in general but you get kind of jet lag just because of the time zone change you go from being three hours behind to three hours ahead so like I'll get there at like seven and really it's seven my time and it's really ten o'clock their time and my dad's trying to go to bed because he's tired and uh, my stepmom and I'm just getting in like, well, I'm not used to going to sleep at 8, 8 or 8 p.m. So, but it just takes some use, uh, some adjustment to get used to here. The last time I went, though, it was nice coming back because my flight was in the morning and as the time's falling back, you're not losing any time. So, like, I left at, I think, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. I was my flight. Uh, out of Jacksonville and then I flew into Denver and then from Denver back into Orange County and I think it was like 12 1 p.m. California time there so it wasn't bad at all it felt like nothing and I got back home I think I got home at about 2 or 2 30 from Orange County so it, it was not bad at all uh, travel time wise not as bad as when you go out there I'll look around my plane here and make sure there's nothing I need to worry about I think we're looking pretty good here. It's not looking too cloudy. I didn't check the weather though. That would actually not be a bad idea right now. So since today we don't have uh, anybody flying with us, we're gonna actually switch over to the other screen and we're gonna pull up the weather and see what it looks like here. Oh, that's a little too close. Let's go by miles, not feet. I don't know how well this works. I'm led to believe that it this doesn't work on this mod the uh, weather map in here so I don't know I mean looking out there it doesn't look bad so I'm thinking that will be fine but we'll see here we'll see uh, when we get there and then flight whoops back to this screen flight wise now it looks like we're about a hundred miles out from a uh, from our destination here so I'm gonna go ahead and give my voice a little more of a rest here I might cut in little bits here and there so you guys can see uh, the Dominic Republic here that we're flying over now but uh, I'll see you guys when we're uh, on our approach here and getting ready to land all right we're getting pretty close to landing here so the weather is a little hazy but it's not too bad uh, that's the airport actually right there so we're gonna be coming in off the water right there for the landing so it should be a pretty uh pretty nice looking landing here um the way the flight plan has us going it has us going out over the uh water here and then we're gonna circle back around to uh line it up with the runway itself so it looks like um i'm not as familiar as i'd like to be with the area but i'm pretty sure i am I want to say this is Haiti right here, this island, so I'm going to be flying like near it, so I'm going to fly near it like this and then land uh, right here. Maybe not that close, because I think we uh, curve in a lot sooner than that. Um, but it's kind of weird on my flight plan, it wants me to get down to 6,000 feet and then go up to 7 and then back down to... Uh, let me see here and then down to 4,000 feet so we're actually gonna go ahead and change my altitude here to 4,000 feet I'm still on autopilot right now so I'm letting the plane do all the work um, but I definitely will have to cancel out uh, some of the flight plan here just because I don't need well, it's going to put me on CI-10, which I guess that's okay. And then it's going to turn uh, right there for the uh, final approach. So, yeah, I'm, 
I could be wrong. Don't hold me to this. I'll I'll know when I do editing. Cause I I'm definitely curious, but I want to say that is Haiti right there. Um, if you look at the VFR map, I'm sure it doesn't say a damn thing. Nope, it doesn't. Oh, you know what? I know how I can look. You guys won't see this, but I'll be able to see it. Um, let me go to Simbrief. I believe that is Haiti. Oh wait, no it's not. I'm landing in Haiti. Oh no. <laughs> well, it's part of Haiti. Okay, so that island is part of Haiti, but I am landing in Haiti. Oh boy. <laughs> if it was going off of uh, current events, I would probably be dead by the time I land. There is a, a lot of turmoil going on in Haiti right now as they're recording this video. By the time it comes out, I don't know, maybe it'll be over, maybe it'll be worse. But uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Hopefully I don't get eaten. Well, I'll just go, go with that. If I say that, it'll probably give you guys an idea of where, uh, where we're at on the timeline with it is. Uh, we're still at 6,000 feet. We need to really start getting uh yep we just start descending a little bit faster than that because before you know it we're going to be on final and i do not want to be going too fast here this is pretty nice getting to uh, fly around here and see all this uh, beautiful views with this water out here and then the island over there so yeah I guess according to Google Maps and it's I would have trusted over me any day for uh, geography uh, all of this right here well you're not gonna really see it because I don't think you can see the arrow on my screen let me see yeah I guess you can't but uh, mostly we're MTCH is to the left of that is considered Haiti so and then all the way down so pretty sure I'm landing in Haley or Haley Haiti <laughs> so is what it is <laughs> oh getting pretty close to uh, our altitude we want to be at here and then we're almost into our approach here which actually yeah, we're about to line up to get hit by the glide slope and then we can uh, better assess how we need to uh, slow the plane. In fact, we're going to start slowing the plane down a bit here just because this is going to be not long to land. The approach starts way back there, but since my flight comes about midway into the approach, the stuff I would normally be setting up for, I don't really need to right now. Um, let's see. Trim is good. I don't need flaps yet, and I'm going too fast for some flaps as it is. We're about to get locked. Oh, there we go. Localizer is locked. Um, let's go ahead and activate approach mode. Procedure, activate. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, oh, approach mode. There we go. So we are on the glide slope. Uh, we're supposed to descend down to 3,000 feet right now. I'm gonna go ahead and move the knob. Actually, let's just hand fly it in. So, it says we're too low right now on the glide slope, so we're gonna just kinda go up while we uh, slow the plane down a bit. Okay, so yeah, I am definitely on the path now. This is a bit uh, muggy over here, so might be a uh, terrible landing if I can land, or I might end up crashing, who knows? Um, I'm not used to, oh, I guess, okay. I'm used to seeing a green dot. I'm not used to seeing the uh, arrow, so that's throwing me off there. For the uh, glide slope indicator. 
Because I'm on it though right now. I am to the left according to the instruments. Oh, let's bank to the left a bit. I am at the right uh, altitude, so we're descending pretty good there, it looks like. I know on my luck, I'm going to have like one of my best landings ever, and nobody's here to witness it. Thankfully, I'm recording it, though. Let me just cancel that out. We don't need that anymore. And right, now we're too far to the left, or to the right. Let's turn back to the left. high now. Have to come down. Let's look. Put a little less power into it here. Alright, I could see the runway lights. Oh. It's uh, too fast still for flaps, so we're going to slow down even more. As much as we can, anyways. Pretty much no for all going on right now. All right, now we can do flaps. Yep. Put our landing gear out. Might have too much flaps. Yep, too much flaps. We're slowing down really fast here. There we go. Plane was feeling a bit heavy there. Okay. Got to let off on the stick there just to give my hand a rest. Oh, now we're too high again. I cannot see the runway. I see the lights. That's about it. If I zoom in, maybe I could see it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Make sure our gear is down. Yep, it is down. I'll need one of those issues. Do full flaps now. All right. Flaps are full. They're slowing down here. Okay, that wasn't buttery smooth, but we definitely put it down pretty hard there. All right, go ahead and uh, kill the power. I'm gonna slow it down here. I'm gonna zoom in while that's going on so I can see where the taxiway is, which it's actually right in front of us here on the right. So let's get ready to that. All right, well, uh, everybody, welcome to uh, Haiti. Hopefully, uh, no gang leader named Barbecue comes out and, uh, kills us and, uh, eats us. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, so we're off the runway now. Go ahead. Whoops, not that. Uh, let's go to flight plan options. And we are going to delete the flight plan because we want to have it set up and ready to go for the next flight. Um, I would assume that little planes park on the left based on the buildings I'm seeing. Yeah, these are all like commercial airline terminals here for when people come. So I'm assuming I'm parking on the left here. Well, there's no real taxi lines to really guide me to where I'm supposed to go. So. I guess we'll just kind of play it by ear here. 
see. Let's continue. We have no flaps. That's good. That's good. Uh, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the courtesy lights for my family in the back, my passengers. You know, we're going to park in front of this uh, brown building right here. Yeah, I think, okay, I saw that stripe. Oh, maybe not. I thought there was another stripe. I don't see one. I guess we're going to just make our own parking spot here. There we go. All right. Set the parking brake. Uh, flight plan is already deleted move my controller out of my way here uh, that's good that's good let's go ahead and start shutting the airplane down here oops put that back up and we'll need this go ahead and get the chocks and get the luggage door open as well the lights turned off turn that off We'll turn all that off and we will go ahead and let everybody out and everybody welcome to Haiti slash Dominican Republic because I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure I'm in Haiti right now. But uh, anyways guys that's going to do it for this video of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought. They won't all be like this and every now and then I'll probably throw a video like this in where people aren't available to fly with me. I'll be able to hang out and talk with you guys a bit there. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care.